My name is Nicole Madiation. I'm the Executive Director of On Screen Manitoba. My name is Yeni Tring, and I'm the President of the Asian Heritage Society of Manitoba. Hey, I'm John, and this is James, and we're from Red Rover Entertainment. I'm Rachel Rusin. On behalf of all of us at Manitoba Film and Music, I want to take this opportunity and offer my congratulations to the Fascination Film Festival in its inaugural year. Hi everyone, I'm Deanna Wong, Executive Director of the Toronto Real Asian International Film Festival. Congratulations on your inaugural Fascination Film Festival. I'm Susan Hansen, Festival Director of the Vancouver Asian Film Festival. On behalf of the Vancouver Asian Film Festival, I wanted to express our heartfelt congratulations on the launch of Fascination Film Festival. Hi, I'm Chris Fajner from the National Screen Institute. We are so proud and excited to be a part of the very first Fascination Film Festival. Congratulations to the whole team. On behalf of the whole team here at On Screen Manitoba, congratulations to Fascination on your first year. We're so excited to be a part of the festival as a sponsor. And a big congratulations to all of the members of the team who are putting the show together. Our society is very proud to be a partner and sponsor of the festival. So congratulations. Hello and welcome to the first annual Fascination Film Festival celebrating Asian Heritage Month and showcasing Asian Canadian films and filmmaking talent locally and from across the country. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that we live and work in the territories of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Dakota, Dene, and Oji Cree nations, and the heartland of the Métis people. Treaty 1, signed in 1871, took this territory from seven local Anishinaabe First Nations to make the land available for settler use and ownership. We thank the First Nations, uh, Métis, and Inuit communities that have cared for Turtle Island since the beginning. With this acknowledgement, we remind ourselves of discriminatory, racist and colonial practices that have and continue to create barriers for Indigenous peoples and communities across Turtle Island. Uh, my name is Alan Wong. I'm the president of uh, Fascination Film Festival and so happy to have all of you here. Um, if you're watching, fantastic. Um, welcome. Uh, to start things off, I'd like to welcome the Federal Minister of Diversity and Inclusion and Youth, the Honorable Bardish Chagar, to give greetings. Thank you so much, Alan. I want to start by acknowledging that I'm joining you from Warlow, Ontario, on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabeg, and Neutral People. Thank you to the organizers of the Fashion Asian Film Festival, and thank you, Alan, for the introduction and all of your work in pulling the festival together. I am very pleased to be with you today to celebrate Asian Heritage Month. This year, Asian Heritage Month has presented an opportunity for Canadians to recognize and celebrate the significant contributions that Canadians of Asian descent have made and continue to make to the growth and prosperity of Canada. Asian Heritage Month is a perfect opportunity to learn about the history, heritage, and cultures of Canadians of Asian descent. And I can't think of a better way than to do that through film. By opening the hearts and minds of viewers through entertainment, you are building an awareness and appreciation of your community. I have to say, when I see people who look like me on screen, it really not only empowers, but encourages me to do even more. This year's theme, Recognition, Resilience and Resolve, focuses on embodying Pan-Asian diversity and the invaluable achievements that Canadians of Asian descent have made in all sectors of society as well as addressing the rise of anti-Asian racism in Canada. This is more than just a theme. It's a call to action. We must recognize the contributions of communities of Asian descent in Canada to this country in the past, present, and future. We must celebrate their resilience in persevering through generations of racism and discrimination. And we must resolve to do better, to be better. Comme l'a dit le Premier ministre Justin Trudeau, La haine et l'intolérance sous toutes ses formes sont absolument inacceptables au Canada. We must all step up and stand together against all forms of racism, xenophobia, and hate. It's on all of us to be allies and to work together to build safer and consciously more inclusive communities. This commitment is taken up by local champions here in Winnipeg, including Minister Dan Vandell, MP for St. Boniface, St. Vital. Minister Jim Carr, MP for Winnipeg South Centre, 
Parliamentary Secretary Kevin Lamoureux, MP for Winnipeg North, and Parliamentary Secretary Terry Duguid, MP for Winnipeg South. As we kick off the festival, I want to extend my appreciation and congratulate you for the ways that you have been able to continue delivering a festival that celebrates Asian filmmakers and amplifies Asian stories despite the challenges that the pandemic has presented us. And with that, congratulations once more and thank you to all organizers, participants, volunteers, supporters, and filmmakers on the Fashion Asian Film Festival and happy Asian Heritage Month. Thank you, merci. Thank you, Minister Chaga. It's an honor to have you here. Next, I would like to introduce the president of the Asian Heritage Society of Manitoba, Ms. Yeni Trin. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Alan, for the invitation today to bring greetings from the Asian Heritage Society of Manitoba. Um, as uh, Minister Jagger had mentioned, the month of May has been designated as Asian Heritage Month um, in 2002 and proclaimed by the government of Manitoba in 2017. Um, and the Asian Heritage Society has been hosting Asian Heritage Month activities since its inception. And I'm very happy to say that we are celebrating our 19th anniversary this year. Given that one of the missions of the society is to acknowledge the contribution of Asian Canadians to Canadian society through their films, arts, culture, and heritage, I'm very proud to be here to celebrate the first ever Fascination Asian Film Festival. Through the years, the Asian Heritage Month for the Asian Heritage Month of May. Uh, there's been showcase and highlights of Canadian and Manitoba films, as well as films celebrating Asian heritage. A lot is different now since the days we started honoring such films. I remember years and years ago when the society presented Asian inspired films at Cinem Cinematheque in Winnipeg, and there were five people in the audience and all of them were Asian Heritage Society members. Fast forward a few years and we had 50 people attending the Asian Film Festival um, at the Japanese Cultural Association Center. I was happy to report that the majority of the audience were not society members. We are now in 2021 and we have a fascination film festival standing on its own. There's a large audience a large list of films being acted, directed, and produced by people of Asian descent in Manitoba and in Canada. And that is due to everyone willing to work hard to make the film industry in Manitoba and Canada happen. Asian Canadians have voices and points of views, and they are speaking up through all the films that we'll be watching throughout this festival. I would like to congratulate Alan and all the people who worked so hard to make this film festival a reality. I'm very honored that the Asian Heritage Society is a partner and sponsor of this festival. So congratulations, and I and all the people I know, because I've shared this everywhere, um, look, really, really look forward to seeing all the events and films this weekend. I know how hard um, everyone must work to get this off the ground and to showcase all the talents. And I can't wait to um, enjoy all the films that uh, I'm sure will be great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annie. <laughs> um, so this festival was originally planned for May 2020 but due to the rise of COVID-19, we had to postpone our launch for this year. And I'm very proud of our team of volunteers for persevering through a pandemic to create a wonderful festival with lots of programming for you all to check out. Manitoba is bursting with filmmaking talent as evident by our booming film and television industry, which has nearly tripled in the past 10 years. A big part of that growth is due to the efforts of Manitoba Film and Music or MFM for short, which is the arm's length government organization that offers programs, funding and other resources, as well as administers the Manitoba Film Tax Credit. We have with us today, the Director of Film Financing Tax Credits and Film Commission Services, Louise O'Brien Moran. Welcome, Louise. Hi, thanks very much, Alan, and hi to everybody out there. Uh, I also want to congratulate Alan and 
all of the people that have worked with him to create this initiative. Um, long overdue in terms of the contribution that people from the Asian community have been making to our film industry that have helped us grow over the years. So uh, that's, that's a real success story and a real testament to your initiative and your hard work, Alan. Thanks so much. <laughs> and thanks for the heads up. I also want to go on a friendly note. Thanks for the heads up about, you know, no Zoom backgrounds and tidy up. <laughs> yes, well, we're using this using this new program, new technology, right? Streaming stream program called StreamYard. And uh, it's fantastic. I mean, like, everything looks really spiffy. But yeah, that's the one thing. You have to have a green screen or a blue screen if you want to have some sort of background. And so not everybody has a green screen or blue screen yet set up in their homes. It's not quite, maybe after you got like year 10 of the pandemic, <laughs> we'll get there. But uh <laughs> For now, I think this will have to do. Um, anyway, so thank you so much for being here, Louise. You know, I've had a, uh, I've been looking forward to this conversation with you because you know we we see each other a lot in industry different different industry events and and um, have worked together you know uh, on a, a variety of like smaller projects and things like that, like having to communicate and that sort of thing. But we've never actually had a chance to really have sit down and have a talk. So that's what this event is about. It's just like having a conversation and giving me the opportunity to interview you about some things related to um, not only the film industry, but also, you know, um, uh, Asian, the Asian community in Manitoba. And so, yeah, I'd love to get started by just asking you um, about something. Uh, I was reading your bio and you've been a part of Manitoba Film Music now for over 18 years, it says. Actually, 19 years next week, so there you go. Well, congratulations on your upcoming 19-year anniversary with Metal Film Music. How has the industry changed in that time? That's what I want to know. You know what? It's, um, it's changed dramatically. I mean, I'd worked in the industry for a decade before I came to Metal Film Music, um, and uh, I would say literally... When I started at Mountain Tope Film Music, we didn't quite have one full crew. And, you know, we were still doing primarily Canadian production um, and just starting to get, you know, US shows in probably the previous five years. Um, I would say what I'm really seeing now, I mean, just through one lens, is uh, there's, a there's a lot more co-ventures and co-productions between Canada and the U.S., Canada and the rest of the world. Canada's always been a great co-production partner. Um, you know, we have 56 or treaties with 56 countries, although it's probably only about four or five that are used. Um, but I think uh, the value of the Canadian creative contribution is, is really, you know, being realized both in front and behind of the camera. And I think that's that's been a big step forward. Hmm. That's great. Hmm. Um, yeah. you, <laughs> great answer. Um, no, it's definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I've been in this industry since, well, my first introduction to it was in 2004, <laughs> which seems like such a long time ago now. Um, but uh, yeah, I also remember that there were maybe like one or two one or two, maybe three productions a year. And now we've got what, 40? Something you know like what, that. well, and it all depends because I mean, a lot of times people, people only think about productions in terms of sort of dramatic and scripted, but there's a whole other side to the industry that's equally important in terms of our friends in, in factual, in documentary, in animation. But you're right, I mean, you know, back when I started in the industry, it wasn't, it wasn't a full, you know, 12 month industry. Um, I was I was fortunate just because my background, I could work whether it was as a as a publicist or locations or AD. So, you know, I could I could work in multiple capacities on shows because any as anyone in production will tell you, you know, if you're in the technical crew, then you have a shorter working window than if you're in sort of the production office AD location side, you start earlier. But um, it's definitely become, you know, a very full-time industry. The only sort of aberrations to that were 
um, the 2008 crash um, that, you know, took a little while to recover. And um, of course, you know, the pandemic, but um, other than that, it's, it's a much, one of the other great things about in Manitoba is it's a very diversified production sector. So it's not all offshore. Um, it's, it's not uh, just local production. We have a good mix both between offshore uh, co-production, co-venture and uh, domestic production, but also within the genres that are done here. So how is the film industry doing right now, like with the pandemic and everything? Like, can you give us a little update on what the situation's like? Why, sure. Lo love these kind of questions and love sharing them with all my new best friends out there and recorded for all of time. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, right now, no surprise, you know, uh, everyone's been watching the news. The pandemic is hitting Manitoba very hard. Um, fortunately, the film industry has has really uh, been exemplary in terms of how to work, you know, under pandemic conditions and taking taking not only the you know uh, public health orders um, to the letter of the law and beyond, but also uh, the rigorous uh, requirements for unions and guilds keep everyone safe. So it's above and beyond. Um, so from that perspective, uh, we've, we're very proud of everyone that's out there right now and working very hard to keep not only their members safe, but the public safe that they work, you know, if they're working in someone's business or whatever. Um, in terms of production, overwhelming amount of production that's coming here right now. So um, right now, if it's a support, supply demand situation, uh, definitely opportunity for crew. Um, we have a significant volume of shows. Uh, we've got great French drama that's getting produced right now, um, the Gabrielle Wa series. Um, we have another series that was just announced. Um, we have a number of movies for television that are happening, a number of independent productions that are happening as well as uh, large independent service productions that are happening. So the message here is, particularly all of our accounting friends out there, accounting is like, you know, the it girl of, of jobs right now. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you that later in the uh, later in the interview. I was going to ask what are like sort of like the hot areas where there's like really uh, a need uh, for for people and like you know people watching if they're interested in getting involved in the industry. You know what where could they you like what, what what skills should they you know uh, maybe train up on or or try to get into which departments should they try to get into? You saying that accounting is one of them. Sure. I mean, obviously, I think I think you always need to go with your strengths. So, you know, stick with your strengths and your natural aptitudes. Um, I can tell you, certainly, you know, in Manitoba, all across Canada, accountants are very much needed. Um, you know, that said, the film world is an entirely different beast. And of course, you're going to have to sort of, you know, start, start where you will, but you will need to um, contact uh, Directors Guild of Canada, um, see about becoming a permittee. You would need to contact Film Training Manitoba to take the requisite courses, but they're available online and they're very achievable um, uh, in order to do that. Um, EP Canada um, also has a number of accounting specific to film production courses that can be done online. So um, there's a lot of ways that are very accessible to you know, get the requisite uh, courses to become a permittee and then also specific to accounting to orient yourself to the needs of the film industry and, of course, your conversation with the Directors Guild of Canada. In terms of accounting, the other jobs, um, I would say uh, locations. Locations is, is always, you know, um, a hotbed for entry-level positions. Anyone that's um, worked in special events, um, uh, logistics is very, 
you know, public relations oriented, but also it's a physical job. And with any jobs in film, and this is this is why we want we want the best people to come and join our world, but we also want you to understand what you're getting into. It's it's demanding work, it's you know, 12, 14 hour day work. And and it's not for the faint of heart, but it actually is a really great um way to make a living. There's great camaraderie. Challenging, but great camaraderie. I can I can attest to that. I've definitely I've worked on set many times and in a, in a few different areas, and there's nothing quite like the feeling of being on set with everybody. The energy is is infectious, and you know, and it's not a bad, it's definitely not a bad gig at all. I mean, like the hours can be long and the work can be hard, but you know, you're compensated well because they're all union jobs, and uh, you get taken care of very well in terms of you know uh, having meals provided and um, you know uh, they they basically make it very easy for you to focus on the job at hand your tasks so you don't have to worry about too much of the the other things you know about yeah. finding parking or you know that sort of thing. No, and and you know I would agree with you and honestly I mean I've been in this business now for almost thirty years and I still feel incredibly privileged and incredibly excited that that we can actually work you know in cinema in Manitoba. I mean, it's an incredibly um, privileged thing to do. And so, uh, you know, and there's and there's multiple sides to working in the film industry. I mean, right now, you know, when you asked about, you know, what is the state of the industry and how busy is it? It's busy. It's a growth industry. It's a green industry. It pays well. There's, there's so many things um, about it that are exciting. Um, you know, the other side of the industry is the content creators. So, you know, everyone, it requires everyone to make a film. So when I worked in production, you know, we come in after it's already been, um, you know, conceived, developed, financed, greenlit, and then, you know, we step up to the plate and do our piece. Um, but, uh, you know, given, given that this is the launch of um, Fascination, I also want to talk about content creators and, um, you know, voices with stories to tell. And that's another piece of what we do at Manitoba Film and Music um, because uh, we fund emerging filmmakers. Um, we fund established filmmakers. Um, there are important stories to be told. And I think that, uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, challenges and opportunities with, with, you know, a broadened distribution landscape but one thing that we services and the like, right? Completely. Yeah. But what we found is there is very much an appetite for great Canadian content. And uh, you know, when you think about uh stories as far back as you know, double happiness, you think about um, you know, Patricia Rosima, you think about um you know, different independent um, filmmakers, whether they were female, whether they were indigenous, whether they were Asian, these are all stories that that need to be told and are more interesting because they have such a strong sense of place. They have a strong sense of identity. Um, you know, we all have have idiosyncrasies in whatever our backgrounds are, and. And when we're not trying to be homogenized to try to meet the broadest common denominator, you can come up with really special stories. I know, starting to try to sound very British, it's very special, but they actually are really special stories. And I'm really pleased that when we did um, our Harold Greenberg partnership for emerging filmmakers, and these are, these are you know, it's multiple people on a jury, it's looking for the best stories, the best uh, prepared applications that show us that you have a solid understanding of how much it'll cost, how long it'll take, your creative vision for it, and, and based on everything being the best. Nobody was trying to do anything other than choose the best. This year, it was three Asian filmmakers that were, that were chosen from completely different, different backgrounds. Last year, um, I'm, try I'm trying to remember. We chose, we chose four, but it's 
um, and 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 just not just the filmmakers, but I'm even looking, you know, at a Sean Sean Garrity when with his recent film mm -hmm. that was, you know, very very focused Filipino focused, and it's just the whole. There's a whole appetite out there for great stories and great characters and great talent. Yeah. And um, one of the reasons why we wanted to be involved in this is to make sure that um, a people understand that there's an appetite for their stories, that um, storytelling, you know, whatever the medium is, whether it's a podcast, you know, a novel, it's, it's all storytelling. And, we want to hear your stories. I'll plug that film that you're talking about, the Sean, Sean Garrity one. I propose we never see each other again after tonight, which is, uh, I heard that it's actually going to be showing on Crave, uh, actually. You might be able to see it on Crave right now, actually. Um, but uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and that leads me to my next question, actually. like, So uh, why is it important for, uh, well, okay, first, MFM is a sponsor of, of this event and of the festival, so thank you so much. Um, but and when I you know when I approached uh, MFM about about sponsoring the festival, they um, Janice, your uh, marketing coordinator, seemed very enthusiastic about wanting to reach out to the under underrepresented communities, such as the Asian community. And so, um, do you find that that perhaps that there is a, a lack of diversity and and why did MFM, why does MFM feel it's important to reach out to underrepresented communities? Because I think that um, A, people, people have a perception that you need to be at a certain level already in order to apply to us. Mm -hmm. In order to, you know, achieve whatever that level is, you have to have had the opportunity to already direct films. So this you know, it's it's never a level playing field because if you weren't, you know, given that opportunity, I mean, one of the films that that was approved for the Harold Greenberg Manitoba Short Film Program this year is entirely in Vietnamese. And it's it's the idea that you can tell your story, you can tell your story in your language and still have it reach people. And I think that if you don't actually um, hear uh, from us saying, because I mean, first of all, most of us in the film department come from a film background. We, that, that is our passion. Um, we want people to know who we are. We want them to know that you can talk to us before you even apply. You can say, Hey, I'm, I'm thinking about this. How does this work? How does the financing work? Um, what are the opportunities? And there's a lot of people out there that, because for whatever reason, Maybe they weren't aware of us. Maybe um, they uh, didn't have a market trigger to qualify for an emerging talent. They went out and they just did it on their own. And so they're outside the quote unquote system. There is right now, it's, it's a very, um, I think a lot of walls are properly being broken down. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to hear from them what they need, if our programs um, aren't working for them, if they are, maybe they didn't come to us for filming, but they want our help promoting their opportunities. There's another filmmaker, Nathan Flores, little shout out here for Sisler. He graduated from um, Sisler program a year ago. Oh yeah, we're, we're very, very acquainted with uh, Nathan. He's yes, great. okay, so can we just give a shout out? So of course. Nathan's, Nathan's film, which is, of course, you know, showing here. I'm going to have a short film. Yeah, a thousand people. Yes. Yeah. But he um, is also nominated for uh, Best Student Film for a CSC Award. And so, you know, we'll have different filmmakers that'll, that'll talk to us about, what do you think about this? How do I do that? How's the best way to, to enhance my profile? Um, you know, how do I get this in front of a programmer? And so um, the ways that we can provide assistance aren't always just with funding, or maybe we can help with locations, um, that sort of thing. But uh, but that's why we believe it's important, because we, we want people to know we're here. 
We want them to know that um, diverse voices and reflecting their experience is not only interesting to us as filmmakers, but it actually also enlightens and can help um, reach people's minds. People may not always listen to what you say. You may not be able to change people's opinions with information, but you can change people's opinions with um, by reaching them emotionally. Yes. I've always said that actually, that movies have the power to change minds. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, I, I, I was inspired by so many different movies as a kid growing up and and even now I'll, uh, I'll watch something that will be com completely enlightening and, and it'll open my eyes to just a different way of seeing or just some piece of knowledge that I didn't know or some perspective that I wasn't aware of, you know, and so um, it definitely has that power. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, you, you know, you talked a little bit about programs and, you know, the Harold Greenberg Fund and everything. Um, so for for those watching who are like emerging filmmakers, like you were saying, uh, maybe have made uh, the Nathan Floreses out there, who have made a couple of shorts, you know, um, what would you, what kind of advice would you give to them? Like how can Manitoba Film Music help them um, reach that next level? So I think the first thing that we have to say is, what are your goals? Are your goals, are your goals to be employed? Are your goals to be a commercial director? Are your clo are your goals to um, create short films that are going to reach an audience in order to, you know, be an influence or change? Like those, those are all important things because if you understand where you're trying to get to, then it informs the choices that you make along the way. Mm. Um, so if uh, and a lot of people, and all, this is another piece, is a lot of people can can start off wanting to be a filmmaker and then they get a job in film. And before you know it, they're making great film money and they kind of forgot about, you know, that they wanted to be a content creator. So mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll sort of talk about creating that balance. Um, other times we'll say, okay, um, if first thing we would say is, be very selective about the film festivals that you're applying for. And because A, it's expensive, and you want to know what do you want out of it? Are you trying to get distribution? Are you trying to get laurels in terms of recognition? Are you wanting it to be a calling card um, for you? So mm -hmm. you need to you need to sort of answer those questions. I would say put together a reel after you've done short films, regardless of whether or not they've, um, uh, you know, won awards or if they've been nominated, it's you put together a reel that shows your sort of best of, right? And you uh, get out there and you keep making films. We also support programs that are delivered through Winnipeg Film Group. Um, we also, uh, support programs that are delivered through the National Screen Institute. And so when you're releasing a film, in the case of, say, Nathan, um, we're going to go, okay, put together a sizzle reel, put together like a quick synopsis of it. And because in this case, you, you've you gotten a nomination, it gives us a chance to sort of be, you know, the braggy relative. And we can send it to people of influence and go, this is an up and comer. You know, he's made this beautiful film. It is, it is just cinematically stirring and gorgeous. And it's it's worth it's worth that time to watch it. And he's someone that you should keep an eye on. Then I'll also tell them you should all register on real, I believe it's called Real World, which is a website for um people of diversity it's that that is is going to give you an opportunity to showcase your challenge i would also have it the signature on your signature of emails that you send out i would have you know your link to your imdb and keep your imdb up to date i would have a link to if and again remember as much as everybody wishes that they would watch everything that gets sent to them mm -hmm. the reality is you're you're always pressed for time. So I would put a sizzle reel in. It's like an amused bouche, something that makes them want to see more. Mm -hmm. Don't give them everything. 
um, but but make them curious. Um, and just have those underneath your signature. Um, I would, if you have the opportunity to work as a director's assistant or a producer's assistant on a, on a, on a film, um, it doesn't mean that you're gonna be there pitching, but once you've demonstrated your value and you've built a relationship with them, you know, there, there's a natural point in a conversation where generally they're gonna say, what do you wanna do? What do you really wanna do? And, and, you know, you want to be able to read the room, but you share with them, you know, your, your goals, but goals without, um, you know, goals without a path and without steps that you've taken on your own to get there. Um, don't show the, the drive and the creative need. It's, mm -hmm. It's sort of like when you talk to actors and 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 the ones that say there is nothing else I could do. I would I would act. I would I would act, you know, either way if I was famous or not because it's what I need to do. What's that saying? It's a saying. It's a saying that I heard. You know, um, goal a goal without a plan is just a dream. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I knew that someone would find it out there. Right now, I'm so pleased that I've actually put together coherent sentences for this. So <laughs> anybody, feel free, jump in and give me what I mean to say, because that's the saying I was looking for. Yeah, no, that's a good one. Uh, definitely. I've, and I've been, uh, I've definitely learned that in the past, uh, you know, few years of working um, in film and just maybe like with life, it comes, you know, with experience, you know, you want to plan for things, you want to be prepared for things and, uh, or else you kind of end up, you know, running in your own circles and not really accomplishing much. Um, and especially with something like film, it's, uh, it's such a complicated process that sometimes you do, you definitely need to follow a plan of some sort. Um, okay, great. Uh, let's, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of go back a little bit because you're the director of film financing, tax credits, and film commission services. So that's a lot of responsibilities. <laughs> Can you tell us like a little bit, just like a little brief summary of each of these things for people who don't know, who don't understand? Like I know that film finance yeah. can be a complicated thing sometimes um, with many different sources. So, and how can MFM help with that? Sure. I mean, I think the first thing that we can do is actually we can deconstruct what seems just like an unwieldy hill to climb. Um, because you think I'm a filmmaker. I don't really understand what you're talking about, you know, film financing. So for me, uh, Manitoba Film and Music, we offer development programs. And for anyone out there, development is basically um, the part from when you've come up with an idea until uh, you develop it by making sure that you've got legal authorship to it. You, uh, you know, go through multiple script um, revisions. You schedule it so you can budget it so you can know how much it'll take to cost. Uh, it'll cost to make. And you put together, you know, a lookbook, a visionary uh, document so that people can see and buy into your vision. And then you're going to um, apply for funds. So, um we have development, then we have equity financing. So that's when a film is actually getting made. So you got five stages of development or five stages of production really quickly. Development is everything before it's financed. Production is when it's financed and you're actually physically making the film. Post-production is when you're assembling the film and turning it into a deliverable product. And then distribution is when you've delivered it to the broadcaster, to the festival, to the distributor, um, to, you know, Walmart, whatever, whatever it's going to be. Um, and, and that's how, that's how you are in that. I forgot pre-production. Between <laughs> development and production, there's, there's that oh so necessary bit of prep. So what we're talking, planning. <laughs> Planning. So film financing for us, it's the development programs, it's the equity programs, it's emerging talent. We also do um, some industry support so that we can help uh, independent filmmakers through uh, Winnipeg Film Group. We can help uh, different emerging filmmakers uh, with National Screen Institute. We also have an access to markets 
program. And even though a lot of markets are virtual right now, you can still apply to us uh, because they all end up having a fee to attend um, an industry market. Hmm. That's film financing, tax credits. Tax credits are a part of every commercial film that's made now. Um, you uh, need to be an incorporated company to apply for them. Um, they're your understanding of them and 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 how they can help finance your film is pivotal. Um, and uh, so we administer those. We also administer the deeming provision that goes along with it. Um, and we work with CRA who co-administers with um, Manitoba Film and Music. And then Film Commission Services, Manitoba Film and Music is the Manitoba Film Commission. So basically, um, we are uh, working with all non-Manitoba-based um, inquiries that are coming into us that aren't here to scout for themselves, that want to get more information. So um, with our team, not me doing it alone, great team, Brian Clasper, Nicholas Schmera, uh, Andrew Gallinger, and Tyson Foster, all helping us put together these services that we offer. And once we can get the productions here, um, and we'll pre-scout with them, you know, sort of do pre-physical production, seeing what's possible, what's not, and then they'll choose whatever Manitoba producer, hopefully, that we're going to work with Manitoba producer, and then um, they're off to the races. That's it. Sounds like a lot. <laughs> and I just want to say this is all only possible with, uh, you know, funding and support from the Manitoba government. Um, through the Department of Sport, Culture, and Heritage, and our Minister Cox. So that that is essential for filmmakers, both for people that are making their own content and count on us for equity, um, for people that work in production, that wouldn't happen if we didn't have a strong tax credit. Uh, that is all only possible because um, there is a strong economic return on film investment. Okay, let's let me ask you about that specifically. I don't know if you can tell us, but can you can you give us some numbers? Like, what is the what was what's sort of like the uh, how much? I guess this is an awkward question to say. Um, how much? You know what? Money that only makes it a funnier in, question, in, and Alan. Sure, <laughs> awkward for me. I'm on the hot seat, but I bet you it'll be really interesting. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell our viewers what is the okay? How much is the uh, does the Manitoba government contribute towards uh, towards the Manitoba tax credit? I mean, obviously, it it varies it varies from year to year, and um, because people have thirty months to file their entire tax credit, mm -hmm. um, it's it's always a moving target between what you think you're going to spend and you're going to get back in the tax credit and what the actuals are when you file it, that sort of thing. But um, off the, you know, off the top of my head, it has gone from probably $17 million five years ago to closer to 30, 40 million in more recent years. I mean, I don't have, yeah. I don't have this and I don't have this in front of me. It's, that's a great um, so, incentive, right? Like that's a great incentive for productions to come here. And you know, considering that, I think that I saw like a number of like total sort of total production spending for the last year was somewhat close, like close to four hundred million. Or was that like a production? Um, no, total total production volumes um, for our our previous fiscal year that ended just as the pandemic happened was you know in the neighborhood of you know two hundred and. 62 million that would be the total production volume um just broad strokes mm -hmm. you know say in the last six years um there's been probably over a billion dollars in total production volumes of which over half a billion dollars has been spent in manitoba this is just broad strokes um and I would say probably 65% of that is on labor. So that's that's bringing in significant 
um, dollars that that don't just stay within the film community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when sets are built, it's lumber, it's paint, it's um, vehicle rental, it's equipment rental, um, it's cleaning staff, it's uh, you know the obvious, the hotels, the car rental, the yeah, so many, so many vendors, right? So many different, so many vendors. Yeah, and actually, the best, you know, it's. Um, one of the ways that the film industry will help the economy recover is, is when films are happening, they spend a tremendous amount of money in a very short time. So suddenly, you know, it's more people getting hired in hotels that may have been laid off because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, it will be, uh, you know, more people being hired at all of the different services and suppliers, the restaurants. Hmm. Great. Um, you know, I think we're going to take um, ask anyone watching if they have any questions that they want to ask. So if you have a question and you're watching this, you can put it in the comments and we'll uh, see what the comments are. And if there are any good questions, we can bring them up. Uh, but that, that's this has been really fascinating. Um, and, you know, I. I originally wanted to kind of make it very, very basic for people who you know maybe that didn't have much information with um, on film, mental film music. But you know, there's a lot of information on your website actually that people can just go to and find out about. I, I more so wanted to pick your brain on some of these more, um, more delicate subjects or more in, in, uh, intricate subjects that that people might not know about. Well, and and just while we're waiting for people to ask questions or not. Um, you know, here's a question for you. So um, after, you know, Fascination Film Festival wraps up, um, is, will you have like an, you know, a sort of, uh, will there be a community uh, sort of landing place where, you know, whether it's Asian filmmakers or crew, can collaborate, can come together, that we can continue to reach out. Um, you know, it's 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 really trying to um, find out who's working, who's working in the sort of wings that we're not aware of, right? Mm -hmm. And and that right. we want to, uh, you know, we want to know about, um, you know, filmmakers out there, uh, writers. Um, people that aspire to be producers, uh, cinematographers. I mean, they're, they're a hundred percent this, you know, there's have been so many opportunities that have been missed by the Asian community, but there's been so many opportunities that we've missed because the Asian community hasn't been able to share their story, have a place on set, bring their talent, bring their lens. Um, it's, we are, we are, we are less because we haven't had you at the table. Uh, we haven't, we haven't done enough, you know, as a society to reach out, lean in, you know, ask, ask you to speak up, you know, ask, ask, you know, uh, you to have a seat at the decision-making and the influencing table. Well, this is interesting because I was actually, so I was part of a panel just a couple of days ago about sort of an unconscious bias. And this has nothing to do with sort of like those things necessarily, but what it does have to do with is that the, I think the onus is on the people in positions of authority to do the outreach, right? To, mm -hmm. to communities who are underrepresented and how they do that outreach, I think is is important to understand because there, it's the difference between a mass email and a phone call. The difference between a phone call and sitting down for a cup of coffee. Like it's, you know, that that level of engagement uh, I think is very important because there's a lot of maybe a trust issues and also like culturally, I know that for, I'm speaking for me and from, from stories that I've heard culturally that, um, the working in the arts in any arts field is not respected not like um it, people the 
there's a there's a generation that doesn't feel like a parental generation probably and and beyond that doesn't feel that that's a real job that that's not a real you know um, there aren't um, possibilities there for for a career and and it's hard to overcome that stigma against uh, filmmaking and and being in move being involved in movies right and you know what I mean that's it's a very good point I mean that's I would say that's not um, exclusive to any one group because I think everybody's parents thought that we were all literally on some sort of, you know, extended carnival ride that, you know, that we would never make careers or, you know, be able to pay our rent or our mortgage or anything. But I think that, um, you know, there's greater expectation um, or, or our experience. And, and in terms of, in terms of, I need to back up a step in terms of reaching out and asking the questions and it coming from people, from leaders in the community, we do need to do that. And we are going to make mistakes and we have to have the humility to, to make mistakes and be corrected when, when we're saying and doing things that we have a blind spot to. So I think the first thing that, that we need to recognize is have the humility to, realize that we haven't done as much as we should or could or needed to or at all and and just kind of park that um i think and this is one of those times where i'm probably going to put my foot in my mouth and say something terribly wrong and i will trust you to correct me on it. and i'm not even joking is i think that um certainly based on the friends that i have that come from visible immigrant communities because my family immigrated here, you know, totally easy, like much easier ride, right? I think d visible immigrant communities have greater expectations. It's, I'm always told, be the doctor, be the lawyer, be the accountant, be the, be the insert, mm -hmm. insert something that means that, you know, we've achieved that. Um, or our, 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 you know, our family as a family, has achieved, you know, a mark of, of something. Um, in terms of sort of legitimizing um, a career, this is this is something when I was doing work with Sisler was, was actually speaking to parents and going, this is very much a career. These are career jobs. This is this is what someone can make in the industry. In the industry, because uh, whether you're with IATSE or DGC, um, you know, actress, actress unionized, but um, you have a pension, you have a health plan, you have all the traditional uh, tenants of a permanent job, even though it's contract to contract. Mm -hmm. And it's a very lucrative um, uh, position. And it, it actually gives you the opportunity to to elevate the perception of of you know wherever wherever you come from right it's not it's through your voice through your stories so you know whether it's being able to put up statistics on what film film people make how many months of a year how many years consistently they're employed um you know just Tell, tell us what would be beneficial and and let's see if we can help. That's Sit me down with some moms and dads. <laughs> Ni hao ma. <laughs> not bad, not bad pronunciation. All right, well, we don't have any questions in the comments. That's fine. You know, uh, I think that we've actually gone through a lot of information here in this short amount of time. And so that's fantastic. And if anybody ha does have questions, they can always reach out. They're, that you're always available to be contacted. Am I right? Yep, absolutely. And uh, and I'm sure that, um, you know, everyone, if you don't already have it, Manitoba Film and Music, um, you can we go to our website. We put the website uh, information in the link below or, uh, or in the comments. And so people should be able to find it. I mean, like, it's not a very difficult name to remember. Um, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for this uh, conversation. It was fantastic. I don't want to take up too no. much of your time. 
but this was a, a really great start to um, start to our festival. You know, just get some yeah. information about the about the uh, industry, get some context, have a conversation with you, and I'm sure we'll be doing that again sometime. And truly, even if nobody reached out right now, I encourage you all just shoot me an email, say you know who you are, what you want, you know what you're looking for, and if you just want to have a conversation, be heard. We're here, and also for the festival. I mean, you know. Well, I'd, I'd rather be involved throughout the year and have conversations in addition, not, it's not an either or, but in addition to us sponsoring. So thanks for the opportunity and good luck. And I hope to catch some films. Thank you so much. And, th and yeah, this, uh, this video will be posted on YouTube. So uh, people will be able to like access this information and hear our conversation and th that, you know, any questions arise from that, they'll know where to go. So great. Thanks Great, so thank much. Thank you so much, Louise. Cheers. Congratulations for Manitoba Film and Music. Thank you. Take care. All right. Anyways, the festival starts tonight at 7 p.m. with our first feature, Things I Do for Money by Warm Peace Sonoda. Uh, you can find it on our festival watch platform by clicking on the link in the description. Once you log in, you can either watch a movie by renting it or when it's available or purchase an all-access pass to unlock all the festival movies and shorts throughout the weekend. Uh, the movies are all scheduled at different times, so check the program either on the website or the watch page for those details. After the movie, you can come back here to watch a live Q&A session with Warren P. Sonoda, where you can ask him questions in the comments right here on the Fascination Facebook page or YouTube channel. Uh, a special thank you to Manitoba Film Music, uh, the Honorable Bardish Chagar and Miss Yanni Trin. Also a big shout out to all of our amazing sponsors and partners. Uh, and a final thanks to all of you for watching. So bye for now.